Okay, so in this first session, we'll start looking at uh, setting up the random and environment variables to get uh, random and working in Maya as well as uh, in Katana. So um, what we will also uh, look into today uh, is using the ACES workflow and I will show you all the steps that you need to uh, do to set up the, the OCIO configuration uh, working inside uh, all of your DCC apps. So let's begin. So um, the first thing that uh, we are going to do is uh, we need to understand what uh, ACES is and uh, um, how we can use it to our advantage and uh, one of the first places that I would recommend looking into is uh, uh, this website uh, uh, Chris Prejean um, he has a section on uh, ACES which is very exhaustive there is a lot of information here but uh, what we are basically uh, interested in is to know that uh, when we used to render before we used to use the linear color space and um, the ACES color space gives you a larger color gamut basically so what you have is you you get to have more colors and uh, you uh, you it's, it's basically the next thing uh, to the linear uh, workflow that we are we were used to before and uh, if you have not been using this um, all this time I would highly recommend uh, switching to ACES and there are a few caveats uh, using ACES within Renderman and I'll show you uh, what those are and how to work around uh, those issues that uh, you will run into when we are using ACES so there is another uh, link here and this one is also very interesting and uh, this is this is um, I would say a more shorter uh, explanation of uh, what ACES is and how you, you can use this uh, within your uh, DCC apps like uh, in our case we are using Maya and Katana so uh, and there are a few things here and there uh, like what we have here uh, would work very nicely with say Arnold but uh, we might have to make a few changes in order to get this to uh, work uh, for Renderman and I'll show you what exactly you need to do um, what you can do is to find uh, our uh, configuration the OCIO configuration you will have to go to this website uh, on github and uh, 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 this link on github and you would want to download uh, what we have here this zip file it's quite large um, and what you would uh, be using is inside this you have a configuration file so there is a newer version here I think I'm still using 1.1 but there's a newer version here and you should be able to use this and there is not a lot of difference but there is a little bit of a difference in in the way um, things look but it's not going to make uh, yeah that much of a difference so once you have downloaded this oh before uh, we do the ACES thing once you have Maya installed uh, Renderman for Maya installed what you would want to have uh, a look at first is the environment variables and see if they are set up correctly in order to use uh, random man within Maya as well as uh, within uh, Katana you need to have these random man variables set up correctly so um, where can we find these so if you were to go to environment system environment variables and uh, look at the environment variables here you should be able to go and uh, see if you have these set up if not 
you can just go create new and you can type in uh, the name of the variable and then the path of the variable over here so say I was missing this one I would just have it set up like that which is exactly what you will see here if I go to edit and that's how they are set up so I would uh, I will provide these in the description so you should be able to uh, set these up um, I would also recommend uh, setting up the environment variable for uh, the uh, path for the bin uh, in your uh, installation so you will be able to find this under the uh, Cisco and one go to the C drive so in my case it is installed in the C drive so I go to Pixar find the version pro server bin and this is where this is pointing to so this path here so there is an advantage of having this setup correctly and that would be if I were to um, if I want to run any of these uh, uh, say for example I want to run TX make I all I would need to do um, is have uh, my command uh, command prompt or my uh, PowerShell and I would be able to just launch um, TX make from here and the way um, if you had if you don't set it up that way just clear this what you will have to do every time is to find TX make here and you should like navigate to that directory every time in order to uh, say I want to convert to texture I will have to navigate to this uh, this first and then run the command from there so that does not make a lot of sense so I would uh, always take this uh, and set this up which I have already done if you look into path here and go to edit you can see I have uh, set it up in this case just go new and just copy and paste this path here and just say okay and that should do the trick so with this out of the way um, how do we get uh, the OCIO setup uh, to get this to work within our DCC app uh, what uh, you will need to do is you can set up a path just like this um, I'm sorry a variable just like this to have the OCIO setup um, in a similar fashion uh, what I mean by that is once you have downloaded the configuration what um, you need to do is in my case I have dumped it here in this directory now here are the config files and if I want to use the config I will need to point to this file right here in my environment variables so I would just go environment variables and I have one setup right here OCIO so if I go to edit you can see you can just type this out OCIO and provide the path uh, that you have here so I would just copy paste it and that's pretty much it uh, once you do this uh, close this out and run Maya in my case it's already open here so I go uh, into settings look at color management and I just enable color management you should be able to see this path setup 
once you have it set up in your environment variables uh, this will show up here so you just enable it and this does not really work um, I'll show you why uh, at the moment you can just like leave it to default I don't think it makes any difference so that's it I just save it and you will be able to see that uh, we are using the ACES uh, uh, LUT uh, here uh, in our uh, viewer as well as if I were to launch an IPR and uh, by the way the scene that I'm using here is the is the teapot uh, I'm sorry the swatch loop def uh, scene you should be able to find this in uh, if you go to PR man I'm sorry the render man site go to learn and resources I believe oh, it's right here the look development studio scene so you should be able to just download this project and follow along uh, if you want to see what I'm doing um, okay back in Maya our render shows up in it and let's just for now uh, grab this and we'll just drop a Pixar surface on it and I'll hit R to re-render that so um, what um, I want to talk about is uh, the the input uh, device transform the IDT when we are bringing in textures uh, which are in the sRGB color space and you will need to convert those to the ACES color space in order to get them to render correctly here um, what you will need is when you are viewing uh, you will be viewing at the uh, viewing the images if you go to view uh, display so we are looking at the images in the srgb color space uh, but when we have the images uh, when they are rendering the render color space should be uh, accg so we will need to bring those textures from srgb color space to accg color space and the way uh, we do this um, is to let's just go uh, assign a texture here if i go to color i can click on that and just minimize this we go to patterns we'll add a pixar texture and if we were to uh, use the older workflow the linear workflow uh, all we had to do before was to let's just add uh, the texture here so uh, in my case I'll just drop this one so it's just a tileable uh, texture uh, here so I'm not doing any changes to this so this is um, as it is I have not converted uh, this to ACS workflow uh, I'm sorry uh, to ACCG I'm just bringing in a default uh, sRGB texture and back in the day you would just uh, do that bring it in and you would just linearize it and what this basically does is it de-gamifies your texture so you have a gamma of 2.2 on your texture and when you linearize this it removes the gamma of 2.2 basically adding a gamma of 0 0.454 uh, to your texture and you write that out. Uh, but in this case as we are not using a linear workflow we are using the ACES uh, color uh, configuration color management so we would not do this what we 
will have to do is uh, another thing uh, you might be wondering that if you are used to using Arnold for example uh, uh, what you would do is let's just take this and we'll just graph this here instead of using a pixel texture I see uh, I use a I use a don't use my summit so it's just make some space 2d file texture let's make one and we'll just connect this in here so you must be wondering like why I'm not using this uh, utility srgb texture so render man currently does not support this so even um, if you set this to utility srgb texture like how we would uh, for say um, Arnold which actually supports this uh, it would uh, sort of like linearize uh, your texture in a way uh, it will it will uh, convert it for ACES but in this case this does not work so what you would need to do is to use an external application like Nuke or use some tools there are a few I'm going to show you one uh, which will allow you to convert your texture to the ACES uh, color space so let's start with new so once in new uh, we have a bunch of uh, uh, images here so what OCIO uh, will do is uh, you can see if I go into settings you will be able to see the environment variable that we have set uh, is applied here as well and you can uh, you don't need to change anything the OCIO environment variable is going to take care of all of the settings that you need to do uh, for your images for example like this one um, I can see Uh, if I were to go into color space, so I have set it to utility raw, but I could just leave it to its default, and then you will be able to see this image uh, without the uh, the display um, ODT. I'm sorry, the output display transform applied, and this is with it applied. Uh, so I have a, a map here uh, which is a tileable map and I am reading it in as raw data applying an OCIO uh, color space node which is OCIO color space add one of these and set the input to be utility sRGB texture so if I were to create one, I think that's the default. If I'm not wrong, no, actually the default is ACCG. So I just go to utility and utility sRGB texture and you want output to be ACCG. So that's what we have set here. And there's just like a display transform here. If I were to look at this in ROS color space, then that basically does the same thing as to using uh, our viewer here to srgb we don't need that we just need to write this out as an ACCG texture um, and we just like render it out as an exr and going back to maya i will just kind of apply that same texture so I can just pick the texture and you can see it does look a little different um, when you view it from here when you view ACCG uh, textures this way but you can just open that out uh, which I have done here 
and you don't even need to convert it because uh, render man can convert it at render time so if I were to go IPR and bring up it shift F to frame this I should be able to see uh, my textures being applied correctly and if I wanted to look at the video and have a little comparison with Nuke here it's pretty much the same so um, the way you make an albedo uh, AOV is to just go into your uh, render settings, render man, look at the AOVs, and you see I have one set up here already. Uh, if I were to remove that, I could go, I believe it comes under lighting, albedo. I can just like add this, create new node, and we have an albedo AOV set up. So um, the other way to create uh, the convert the textures to a dot text file um, is one is using your command prompt. You can use a command prompt, and if you have set up the environment variables correctly, um, it's just a matter of uh, doing x make and providing the paths here so I would just go uh, you could also add uh, if you if you go text uh, make and if you hit enter you get a few flags that you can add um, onto your TX make uh, for example if I wanted to maybe uh, blur this uh, in SNT or if I wanted to set an SNT mode to be a periodic texture I think by default it is set to periodic I'm not 100% sure but I think it is um, so I could uh, add those flags um, along with uh, the path the way you do this is you go TX make uh, followed by space and add the path of the texture I would add a space and add the path of the texture again and this time I would write it as dot tex and if I hit enter that will convert and give me a dot tex file so um, the other way to do this uh, is if you don't want to go through the steps of creating uh, the conversion uh, I'm sorry doing the conversion in new and then uh, converting it in text if you want if you just want to use the utility uh, there is something from Amir um, which you can find it's called the render man utility manager uh, you can download this utility and what we can do with that is I can just go show you very quickly uh, I have it here so you, you can just run it so the random and utility manager allows you to use these maps um, convert them and uh, also create a material with uh, all the correct read nodes uh, assigned to them if you don't want to use the material it's uh, it's all right you can just go use the textures um, for uh, for that so so i can just go into source directory and uh, bring in the the texture so in my case, let's just go go into tileable textures, and I have this wood floor uh, 
textures. I think I've already done a conversion here, but it doesn't matter. I'll just override it. Choose this directory, select, and I want the output directory to be the same. And here I can go to image to text and select uh, the textures. You can see I have a few. Uh, I can just grab those. Uh, I don't know if that's the one I want, but I can just grab these, select. Um, it has to show me the albedo texture because I need to add this. So let's just see if I can go to ACCG. Here we go. I can choose the albedo. So I have those uh, textures selected and I can choose them to be periodic. And if I were to go and hit save, it will go and convert those textures for me. Um, this also allows me to do um, denoising. So the, the render man, uh, it uses the, the Hyperion denoise that is available in render man, um, as well as uh, it will let you use the open image denoise from Intel um, yeah so that's the other way to convert the textures so if I were to go and look at the texture library I can see under workflow it has created uh, dot text files and uh, those will have the color uh, correct this is color space. So this is the other way. So I would, uh, I think wrap up here. And uh, the same thing applies um, in Katana. So once you have the colors, this uh, uh, is color uh, conversion done for your textures. You can just go into here, create a network material and just add a Pixar texture node and you should be able to use them just the way uh, we are using them in Maya. So um, I'm going to stop here and I'll see you in the next one.